This is one of those moments that unfolded in real time in the screening room on Sunday, watching the Bengals Steelers game, watching Deontay Johnson catch a pass at the back of the end zone and then lose possession of it as he was falling to the ground. And it took them a little while to realize on the broadcast. I don't want to call it. You heard me yelling, right? You know, right? I was. It took them a little while to realize that was a catch. It all happens quickly, but catch and three feet down. That look in the end zone, two feet down, and the ball is enough. He took a third step. Right. And it's as he's going to the ground that the ball comes out. That's a touchdown. Yes. He's not going to the ground while he's catching it. Exactly. He's being shot to the ground after the catch right. is over. Exactly. And and we're we're talking about this number one. The official should have should have gotten it right in real time. But then Mike Tomlin should have, especially a team like that, where touchdowns have become precious commodities. You throw the red flag there. When in doubt. When you're a team that is desperate for touchdowns and you've got a new offensive coordinator, that's where these other factors have to come into play. You've got to throw the red flag there. Even if it's crickets in his headset, he's got to understand the potential value of getting lucky there because a lot of times you get lucky and they screw it up and they give you the touchdown when they shouldn't have. Here, it wouldn't have been luck. That was a touchdown, Chris. Yeah, I, I I think, you know, there was some, even in our Sunday night football game, with some spots on third down that John Harbaugh didn't look at it. And he goes, that was a first down. It was a bad spot. And, you know, they ended up going for it on fourth, and they missed one and didn't make another one. Like, you know, these are, these are moments in the football game where, to your point, where you got to be a little bit like, hold on, let me take a good look at this. Uh, let me make sure here. And that's where it becomes extremely important and paramount to whoever you got in your ear that's that's been afforded the job or the luxury or whatever of being the, hey, you should throw the red flag or, hey, I'm sitting here and trying to give you advice because I can watch on TV and I'm seeing all the angles right now and I'm not on the sidelines. That, that person's important to get in the ear of the head coach to go, hey, 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 don't let him call play yet here. Let's take one more look at this here before we snap the ball. And as we know, what happened? The next play was a fumble. The Bengals pick it up and, you know, change the game for a while. The way you went, whoa. I mean, is Cincinnati going to pull this off? But uh, it was a huge moment in the football game. And I think there was confusion about the surviving the ground aspect. And that was not, like you said, surviving the ground. He caught the ball standing up three feet and then got hit and tackled to the ground which he had already made the reception. So, yeah, they blew an opportunity there. And you're right. When you're a team like the Pittsburgh Steelers, you got to be extra careful and diligent in those moments when touchdowns don't come that easy. And that's why I think for any head coach, there's two different factors that drive the decision of whether you're going to use the challenge flag. More than two, but I'm going to put it in two buckets for now. There's the, do I have somebody who's seen clear and obvious evidence in that limited amount of time we have to say absolutely positively, I see it, I see it, I see it, throw the flag. Then there's the other side of it, which is the broader circumstance where maybe the definitive look comes later while they're doing the full-blown review. And we're hoping for a little luck, either in the form of they come up with a view that helps us or they do make a mistake or they reofficiate the play instead of defer to clear and obvious evidence. That's the primary mistake that gets made in the application of replay review. But some circumstances require taking that calculated risk, knowing all I'm giving up is a timeout and I'm giving up one of my challenges and I'm not going to get a third one now because if you miss the first one or the second one, you don't get a third one. But the circumstances require me to say, you know, I don't. And I think that creates three levels then for whoever's talking to you, Chris, There is, I absolutely see it was wrong, I absolutely see it was right, or I don't know. And when you're in category three of I don't know, that's when the other factors drive the decision. Same thing as Monday night when Josh Dobbs throws a 50-yard pass to Jordan Addison who makes a catch in double coverage and... The ball I think didn't hit the ground. The ball. Yeah, yeah. The ball did not hit the ground. I think John Perry, oh, the ball hit the ground. Hey, John Perry, shove it sideways. The ball didn't hit the ground. No. You throw the red flag there because you're talking about a 50-yard gain, not a 5-yard gain, not a 10-yard gain, a 50-yard gain. Throw the flag. And look, Tomlin's been doing it forever. Kevin O'Connell's in his second year. 
these experiences for both guys, I think if you're serious about self-evaluation, they get filed away for the future. Because when you're in that that range of, I've yet to see a definitive view either way, yeah. yes or no. Right. There are times where you just got to, you got to say, screw it. Because the upside is so much better than the downside that I'm willing to take the risk that they're not going to overturn the I, ruling on the field. I, I, I agree with you there. There's one aspect where I do think, depending on what time of the game it is, too, can be affected here. Like for the one with the Pittsburgh Steelers there, it's the first half of the football game. You haven't seen that definitive view? It's the first. Call a timeout. It's a first half timeout. Call a timeout and give yourself a chance to see the plays and see what happens. Either way, I don't think it was, the next play was going to be a third down anyways. Let's make sure we get in the right play. Okay, we call the time, but I can watch this too and see because we're not good. We're down in the red zone and we don't score touchdowns a whole lot. So one, I want to make sure we get the right play on third down. Two, I'd like to look at this a few times with some other people upstairs who can talk to me and we can fi figure this out. You know, So you don't even have to throw the challenge flag and lose a challenge there. That's what I would say in that instance, and I think that's where you know Mike Tomlin, the next time that happens, he'll probably reevaluate it and, and take that approach because I think that's a safer way than just throwing the challenge flag and then, uh, I'm not sure, right? If it's the first half of the football game, certainly I think that's the play uh, going forward. Here's Tomlin from his Tuesday press conference on the failure to challenge what would have been a Deontay Johnson touchdown. You don't always get an opportunity to make a – to get a timely look at things, and particularly as it pertains to scoring plays, um, oftentimes I proceed with the assumption that if, if they call it a non-scoring play, then I believe they're not speculating in any way. Obviously, we have automatic replay for scoring plays, and that component, that mechanism, uh, I think if there was any question in their judgment, they probably would have called it a scoring play and allowed the automatic review to happen. And so sometimes when I'm in Rose stadiums, if I don't get a look or if it's not provided in stadium, I ride with that premise and that knowing uh, because I know how games are officiated. Th that makes sense, but it speaks to a, a bigger issue. And I've been saying this for years. Once they made replay review standard practice for scoring plays and turnovers, the easy response to that is, wait a minute, why isn't it also automatic for the play where if the right decision had been made on the field, it would have been a score? Like, that Deontay Johnson should be an automatic review either way. Whatever the ruling, because it would have been a touchdown if they had gotten it right, That's th those are the stakes. A touchdown is what's at stake here. A turnover is what's at stake. Like, if a guy dives for an interception and the ruling on the field is that the ball hit the ground before he caught it, then you have to throw the red flag. If the ruling is he caught it, then it's an automatic review. We know the stakes. It's the same stakes. And I know they don't want to complicate the game and slow it down. There's, there's certain circumstances they've already acknowledged are important enough for it. They're just ignoring the other side of the same coin. Oh, well, if it's a scoring play, we'll automatically review it. Well, it would have been a scoring play if your officials hadn't gotten it wrong, so you should be reviewing that too. That's a broader issue, but that – that would mean that you don't have to make that decision of throwing the red flag. They're going to look at it automatically, and I think they should look at something like that automatically. Yeah, I think this is one that's going to eventually go that way because I think coaches are in the competition community and all that are going to bang the table. It's Like you said, the stakes are too high. With gambling, the amount of money the league's making, and we're just seeing, you know, guys can get their ass fired after 12 weeks, and who knows, you get a little bad luck with a bad call here or there or whatever. So that's where I think they'll have the backing of the coaches to want to see that, right? And, you know, I know we had the other touchdown in the Broncos game we wanted to review. You want to go over that too with the uh, Troutman one that would show that one at all? Well, this is one where there was a successful challenge yeah. made that resulted in a touchdown for Alden Trapman against the Cleveland Browns. And the ruling on the field, and this is one where, again, the ruling on the field, no touchdown. Sean Payton had to use a red flag, had to risk a timeout to get this touchdown that ended up being the dagger. And yeah, and, and it's another example. This is why I say embrace technology and and rely less on officials on the field official looking right at it gets it wrong and i'm not saying that he screwed up it's just a lot to process a tight in call time. one it's that's a tight quickly. one quickly that's hard it's a very it's a very tight call but that's why we should embrace when we have the benefit of these views and all these cameras that are blanketing the action 
we, we take advantage of that and not rely on the naked eye. The naked eye is very, very faulty, as we see all the time when we watch these games. And again, doesn't mean they stink. It just means they're human. Yeah, no, that, that that's right. And, you know, to, to Mike Tomlin's point there, what was the difference too? Sean Payton was in his home stadium. They put the replay on the big board right away, right? The whole fan base, the stadium, Sean Payton could see it on a 70-foot screen and go, oh, crap, he got in there. Look at where we paused it. He's in. Let me challenge it. That's the luxury you do have of being a home team compared to a road team where when they see things like that, they don't put that play on the big board because they don't want to know if he was accidentally in the end zone or not. I think the easiest approach is just review everything. And if you don't want to go that yeah. far, scoring plays or plays that would have been scores, turnovers or plays that would have been turnovers, depending upon the ruling on the field, or first downs or plays that would have been first downs. Make those automatically review. That's where your sky judge comes else. into it again. I think that's where your sky judge comes in. Because, you know, again, well, I, I don't know and, if we have enough manpower at 345 to go through all this stuff all the time with all these games. It doesn't seem like there is. So, I, you know, that's where I'd it'd be better to have somebody there in, uh, in person to expedite the process a little bit. Well, and you make a great point because they've got this expedited review now. They've got this limited sky judge that could have fixed the Deontay Johnson play without a full-blown review. And there's a weird sense as to when and how that gets used. But I'm glad you mentioned that because the replay assistant could have overruled the ruling on the field and made it a touchdown without Mike Tomlin having to do anything. So that that just there's like this weird, vague, when do they use it? How do they use it? When will it happen? When will it happen? It needs to be a more confident feeling of consistency with the limited sky judge they currently use. One last item yeah. has nothing to do with anything that happened this week. It happened last week when Kareem Jackson, back from a two-game suspension, lowered his helmet and struck Josh Dobbs, Vikings quarterback, in the chest in the Sunday night game on the opening drive on this cutesy third down play. Here he comes in like a missile. He doesn't get ejected. He doesn't even get flagged, which in hindsight is freaking ridiculous that this wasn't flagged. I mean, look at him coming in hot. Boom. Launches lowering the helmet, and lowers his helmet. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. No, no ejection, no foul, four game suspension. Jackson said last night he's flying to New York today to meet with Roger Goodell. And my first thought was he's been called to the principal's office. As it turns out, he wants to go talk to the principal, seeking clarity on it. Here's your clarity, Kareem. You could save the plane fare here. Don't drop your helmet and launch into an opponent. That's your clarity. And I don't know what he's expecting to hear from Roger Goodell, but he's got this sense that it's not being officiated consistently. Others aren't being flagged. Others aren't being... This is that woe is me bullcrap when you see guys engaging in blatantly illegal tactics and they want to say they're not. Right. Uh, Kareem Jackson is an awesome football player. He's one of those guys that will never go to the Hall of Fame, but is a legend in, in a lot of ways. An unbelievable player. Had a great career with the Texans, transitions to safety, and he's a damn good safety for the Denver Broncos. Right? I have mad respect for Kareem Jackson, but I don't have mad respect for his approach to hitting people this year. Not at all. I don't. You know me. When we were in the viewing room watching that game right there, I was literally yelling out going, hey, he's done for the year. I can't believe it's four games. I thought for sure he'd be suspended for the year. Indefinitely, because to what you're saying, one, listen, yeah, there's inconsistencies in the lowering of the helmet stuff and all that, but not when it comes to what Kareem Jackson has been suspended for or flagged for in games. His have been the most egregious, obvious, head-hunting, lower crown of the helmet, launching hits in the game this year. I mean, so I love his physicality, but we've seen everybody in football has been capable of making the adjustment of taking the head out, hitting guys between the shoulders and, you know, above the knees right there. He's talented and smart enough to do that too, right? You know, and to me, I'm with you. This is one where they're going to put on the film and go, Kareem, what, what can you possibly even be arguing that you don't think this is a penalty or endangering somebody or yourself? And I think that's probably the realization he'll end up coming to at the principal's office today. There's a deeper issue here for another day. And I got into a little bit of a text exchange argument with a head coach last week about this. But when you see those tactics repeatedly happening, where's the responsibility of the coach? Yeah, I hear you. 
Right. Is it being coached into him? Is well, it being coached out of I him? I hear you. The coaches don't get fined. No. The coaches don't get suspended. And there was a time where, like, you know, Mike Tomlin wasn't fully on board with these safety changes. Yeah. And I remember Ryan Clark getting fined and then yeah, saying, they hey, were I got killing praised in, in the film for room for that hit. Right. Yeah. yeah. Where's the coach's responsibility to stop a guy who's doing these things? And – how much of this is baked into what they want a guy to do? And Definitely. I'm not saying – I don't know anything about it. And I'm just saying in the abstract, conceptually, yeah. there's a line there that they don't cross, but it's a fair question. Where's this coming from, and why aren't the coaches stopping him from doing it? Uh, it's a fair question. It is Sean Payton, you know, who was the Saints and Bounty Gate, right? You know, it's fair to, to connect those All the lines. more reason for him to coach it out of it. Agree. All the Agree. more reason for Vance Joseph to be saying, Kareem, you got to stop it or we got to sit your ass on the bench. That, that's exactly right. And and Sean Payton, that's why I love him because he's known for his offensive brain and doing all that. But, I mean, his teams are the most physical in football always. And I think what you're talking about, you know, there is a little disconnect of – the old school and the new school there, right? I've been a part of some of those where, yeah, it's an illegal hit. We don't want the penalty, but uh, we kind of like it and close doors in the meeting later that week because it, it, it shows you we're no-nonsense physical. Sets we're tone. coming at you no Sets matter what. And so what if we get a 15-yard? Like That's still a thought process in football, and it's hard to bake it out. So, yeah, you just try to get it out and do it the right way and not do things like that where you lower your head. And, you know, ultimately what I worry about with hits like that is I worry more about Kareem Jackson there than I do Josh Dobbs. I mean, that's one where, yeah, bad things can happen when you put your head in that position, and I certainly don't want to see that. All right, quick break. When we return, we'll take a look at the best catches from Week 12. More PFT Live right after this. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.